This video is on the RFF classwork number one, okay, review for final exam, classwork number one. So on this problem, when they want you to find f of one, what you need to remember is that f of x is equal to y. And so when they say f of one, that is your x. We know our x is one. We want to find our y. That's really what this is asking us. So we're going to come to this graph. And we're going to go to where x is 1, okay? And I'm going to go everywhere x is 1. This is everywhere x is 1, okay? Up and down this line. And then where that crosses this graph, that is going to be where, what f of 1 is. So f of 1 is equal to 4. Because again, this point is 1 comma 4. So when my input is one, my output is four. On number two, um, we are looking at finding an X and a Y intercept. And so for a problem like this, um, let me just kind of draw it in here. This that I'm drawing here in purple, this is our Y axis. Let me draw that better. Okay, so this is our y-axis. This one here is our x-axis. And so the x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So um, let me start with the y. So the y crosses here. This point is 0, 3. So zero comma three. Okay, the y-intercept is three, but again, on multiple choice final, they probably would have zero three and three comma zero. So you need to understand that this is zero because I'm not moving left or right, comma three. The x-intercept is here, and this is one and a half, so 1.5 comma zero. So that is our x-intercept, and again, you want to make sure that you understand the 1.5 is our x, 0 is our y on the x-intercept. Um, on number 3, on 3 we're solving for x. So what I would recommend on a problem like this is I would distribute my 2. So I'm going to get 2x plus 8 is equal to 2x plus 7. Now, um, some of us might notice right away that we have a 2x on both sides. So what's going to happen is when I subtract 2x here and 2x here, those are going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with 8 is equal to 7. You always want to see what you get when your x's cancel out. Don't assume it's automatically no solution. You want to check and see if this is a true statement or a false statement. Now, 8 equals 7 is false. That's not right. So that means my answer is no solution. Um, number 4, they want us to solve for y. That means we're going to get it to be y equal. We're not going to get a number answer. So when I'm doing this, um, here, let me draw my line here. Um, I am going to minus 2x from this side and this side. Now on this side, I'm going to get negative 3y is equal to, and you can either write 12 minus 2x. I'm going to write it with the negative 2x first and then the positive 12. So again, this is a negative 2x and this is a positive 12. So I wrote my negative 2x first and then my 12. And then we're going to divide by negative 3. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by negative 3, this by negative 3, this by negative 3. And once I do that, here I'm going to get y equal. Here a negative over a negative is a positive 2 thirds x. And here 12 divided by negative 3 is a negative 4. And here is our equation. Now this is actually a line. And in this form, I can identify my slope as two-thirds if they had asked me that question. And I can identify my y-intercept as negative four.
Okay, number five. Okay, on number five, they want us to write an equation for this table. I like it when I know my zero. I don't know my zero in this case. Now, what you'll notice here is um, I my change of x, okay, because I find, let me scooch this over a little bit. <clears throat> here, my change of x is three between these. It's also three here. So you'll notice is I'm adding three, adding three. I'm kind of going by threes. So I could go backwards, okay, minusing three, minusing three. If I minus three from this, I get zero. Over here, from here to here, this was a negative two and now it's a negative three. So this is my change of y and this is a negative two. Um, here, this is also a change of y, negative two. So that means I'm minusing two, minusing two. So going backwards, I could do the opposite, add two, add two. And when I add two here, I end up with one. Now, the nice thing about that is this is my y-intercept, okay? So when I have my equation y equal mx plus b, this zero comma, let me just highlight it, this zero comma one tells me that my b is one. So, I'm going to have, let me put this in here, y equal mx plus one. And now my m is my slope and my slope or m is equal to my change of y over change of x, change of y over change of x. And my change of y is negative two and my change of x is three. So then my equation is gonna be y equal negative two-thirds x plus one. <clears throat> and there's my equation. On number six, so on six, <clears throat> I wanna find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the slope, and then write the equation of the line, okay? So, um, for this, my x-intercept is right here, so that is negative four comma zero, so negative four comma zero. My y-intercept is down here, that is zero comma negative two. My slope is how I'm moving from one point to the other. Now, I can move from here to here, but this is actually a nice point right here. I can go from here to here, and that's a little smaller and I don't have to reduce. So I'm going down one over two. Okay, so I'm going down one, so I'm gonna write negative one to the right two, which is a positive two. So my slope is a negative one over two. Again, it's always change of y over change of x. Now, if you're not writing that this is negative, Pay attention to the line, it's going downhill, so your slope should be negative. Now, my equation of my line, I'm just gonna write over here, remember, y equal mx plus b. This slope, this is my m. This y-intercept, this is my b. So my equation is gonna be y equal negative one-half x minus two, and that's my line. On number seven, we are asked what is a y-intercept? I mean, sorry, a, yeah, a y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses, touches the, the y-axis. Okay, now in my line, y equal mx plus b, just make sure you understand that this b is the y-intercept, okay? But again, what is the actual y-intercept? 
the actual y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the, the y-axis. But again, in this equation of a line, it is our B. On number eight, um, I want to write the equation of a line parallel to this line that goes through zero seven. A couple of things I want to just state here. Um, I want I know they're only asking about for parallel, but I'm going to just say this in this problem because at some point you might be asked about perpendicular. So parallel lines have same slope. Okay. Perpendicular lines, what you do is you have negative reciprocal, okay? So the slopes are negative reciprocal. Or negative reciprocals. And I'm gonna be taking this off here so I can write the problem, but I wanna make sure that we understand that um, the difference between these two, okay? So in this case, since my slope is supposed to be, well, our line's supposed to be parallel, my slope is this negative two right here that's in front of our x. So here my slope is negative two. Now, <clears throat> in case they had asked us for perpendicular, if my original slope is negative two, my perpendicular slope would be where I change the sign and I flip it. So I usually would say flip and change sign. Okay, that's what we do. So if I flip negative two over one, I get one over two. And again, this was negative. So this is now gonna be positive. I'll put plus just to emphasize this was negative. Now this is gonna be positive. And the reciprocal of two is one over two. So this would have been my perpendicular slope, okay? Now, again, they wanted us to do parallel. So that means that they have to have the same slope. So my slope of my new line is going to be m equal negative two. So let me just get rid of this. Let's see, hold on. Let's see if I can get rid of this. Don't want to get rid of all of that, just want to get rid of part of it. Okay. So now, um, to find the equation, I know my equation is going to be y equal negative 2x plus b. And um, I'm just going to kind of emphasize something. So if you wanted to have it go through this point, okay, any point, you can put the point in for the x and the y and find the b. So I can go seven is equal to negative two times zero plus b. So this becomes zero and I get seven is equal to b. So my equation is going to be y equal negative two x plus seven. And that's my equation. Now for a point like this, this is a special point. Anytime they give you a point that's zero comma something, that happens to be your y-intercept. So that seven could go right here. Now, what I want to show you is what people do sometimes by mistake. Let's say that I didn't want it to go through zero seven. Let's say I wanted it to be parallel, but I wanted it to go through three comma seven. Okay, let's say it was three comma seven, not zero comma seven. Okay, again, zero comma a number is the y-intercept. A lot of times I will see people take this seven, regardless of what's here, and just stick it here. That is not what we do, okay? Only if it was a zero. So if this <clears throat> happened to be where it had to be parallel, so again, it's gonna stay a negative two, but it had to go through this point, I would put seven here, for example, negative two times three plus b, I get seven is equal to negative six plus b, I add six to both sides and I get a 13. So you'll notice that I did not get the seven just because my y was seven, okay? This three is adjusting this. If it was a zero, it would cancel out and I would be left just with this number. That's why I get that every time here. Um, but this negative two x plus um, 13, 
and that's our equation. Okay, so this is what they wanted us to find. I just want to emphasize that you don't just take the number that is your y and stick it here because in this case, the only reason that worked was because this was a zero. This was our y-intercept, and this is the y-intercept. <clears throat> okay, um, next problem. Okay, on number nine. Okay, so if, so on number nine, this is dealing with sequences, okay? And we did not do arithmetic and geometric sequences this semester. Um, in the past we had, so I'm just gonna go over this problem just so I explain it, but don't worry about being tested on this, okay? So when it says f of one equal two, give the first five terms for um, the sequence, just so you understand what a sequence is. Let's say I start with um, four, and then my next one's seven, and my next one's 10, and 13. I think you guys can see a pattern here. I am starting with four, I'm adding three, adding three, adding three. I could figure out what the next one is by taking this term, my one, two, three, fourth term, and onto my fourth term, adding four, uh, adding three to find my, um, sorry, adding three, wrong, any wrong number, adding three to find my fifth term, and so on, okay? That's a sequence. Now, in this case, this one, this four here, would be my f of one is four. This is saying my first term is four. So what this f of one equal two is telling me is that my first term is going to be two. And what this plus four is telling us here, this is something called a recursive formula, but what this plus four is telling me is if I want to find, for example, now I have one, two, three, four, five, my sixth term, okay, my sixth term, f of six, I would, I would take f of five, which is the term in front of it, so this one right here, and then add my next number, okay? In this case, I was adding three. So this f of two, f of one equals two, is telling me that my first term in my sequence is two, and this, which is called a recursive formula, is saying, hey, what are you doing? You're adding four every time. So this was, again, just an example, just so you understand kind of what sequences are. So in our case, our f of one equals two tells us that our first term of our sequence is two. And then this plus four says I'm adding four. So I'm gonna get six, I add four again, 10. I add four again, 14. I add four again, I get 18. I'm gonna stop there because they wanted the first five terms. That's your answer, okay? Um, on number 10, on number 10, this one is slightly different than number one. On number one, let me just go back for a second. So on number one, they said, okay, um, find f of one. And so f of one, we put one right here, okay? This is where my x is one. And I wanted to find if my x is one, what's my y, okay? So if my x is one, what's my y? In this case, we wanna find our x knowing our y, so it's opposite. Okay, so let me get back to that problem. Okay, so on this problem, again, just a little reminder that, um, f of x is equal to y. So what that means is I want to find my x that has a y of 4. Okay, I don't know my x, I know my y is 4. What x gets me 4? So I'm going to go to 4 on my y-axis, okay, and I'm going to go across. This is 4, this is a height of 4, and then where do I touch the graph? And so I touch the graph, it just gets a little darker. I touch the graph right here. And what is this point? Five comma four. So again, what x, 
will give me an output of four, five. So my answer is five. On number 11, okay, on number 11, this is one you have to be careful. Uh, maybe write out what this is saying. This is saying I'm taking an x minus five times an x minus five. So when I square something, I'm multiplying it with itself. So when I do that, I'm gonna use an area model. This is an x minus five, x minus five, and then we're gonna multiply this out. Down the road, you're gonna start recognizing this as a, um, so I'm just gonna get my pink back, as a perfect square trinomial. Okay, something that you're gonna to wanna to know for integrated two and integrated three and so on. Um, but right now we're just gonna multiply it out and understand that if you have this squared, it means you're multiplying it with itself. So this is gonna be an x squared, a negative five x, a negative five x, and a negative times a negative, that gives me a positive 25. And then you write out your answer. So combine like terms, I have an x squared minus 10x plus 25, and that's your answer. On 12, on this one, um, there's a couple of ways we can do this. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm just going to fraction bust, okay? So I have this three on the bottom, this three, yeah, this three right here, and I want to get rid of that three. I wanna bust this fraction. So since I only have one fraction here, or one denominator that I need to get rid of, I'm gonna multiply everything by this. I'm gonna multiply everything by three. So I'm gonna go three times my five minus, three times my x over three equals three times my six. So I multiply this by three, this by three, this by three. Here, three times five is 15. Now, when I have something like this, this three is really three over one. So what's happening is these are really multiplying on top. So these are all gonna be on top. These are all gonna be on bottom. So since I have something that's gonna be on top and bottom, that's the same, I can simplify that, that makes a one. And then I'm left with minus x. On this side I get 18, and now I'm gonna solve. I'm going to minus my 15. I get negative x is equal to three. Now that's negative x, I want positive x, so I can divide this by negative and this by negative. I divide this by negative one, I get x, I divide this by negative, I get negative three. If I see that I have a negative x or a negative whatever letter and I want the positive, just make everything opposite. Everything opposite on both sides and you'll get the right answer. Okay, number 13. So 13, I'm gonna do it the same way I did the problem before where it was an x minus five squared, okay? Um, I'm gonna do an area model. So I have a 2x and a negative three. I have a 5x and a positive six. And now I am going to multiply. I get a 10x squared. I get a negative 15x, 12x, negative 18. And so I have 10x squared minus 3x minus 18 as my answer. Okay, let's see, number 14, um, we're solving for x on this, and so um, do not do this. Don't put three here. Five minus two, three, no. We have to do order of operation. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, addition, subtraction, way over here. Okay, parenthesis. I got a parenthesis, I got to do that first. I have multiplication, I got to do that. So addition, subtraction, no, 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 okay? Do not do that five minus two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute that negative two to both of these, okay? So I'm gonna get five and then negative two times x is a negative two x. Negative two times one is a negative one equals four. Um, then I get four minus two x equals four. 
I'm going to minus 4. I get negative 2x is equal to 0. And then I divide by negative 2, and I get x is equal to 0. Okay, and I should have wrote negative 4 here, negative 4 here. And just to make sure everyone understands, right here, since all of this is on the same side of the equal, I can do that math. I can combine like terms, and a 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay, so I get x equals 0, and you're allowed to have 0 as an answer. Okay, if I put 0 on here, 0 plus 1 is 1. Let's see. Oh, wow. Double checking myself. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Because what did I forget to do? A common mistake. It's a long day, obviously. Okay. So I am going to take a negative 2 times x, which is a negative 2x. I'm going to take a negative 2 times 1, which is a negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Now this is on the same side of the equal. I'm going to clean that up. I get a 3 minus 2x equals 4. I'm going to minus 3 from both sides. And here I'll do the, the subtraction. Um, so I get negative 2x is equal to 1. I divide by negative 2. And I get x is equal to negative 1 half. And that's my answer. So when you distribute this negative 2 to the x, we get negative 2x. And don't forget to take your negative 2 times your 1 to get your negative 2. And then the last problem on this worksheet is a scatter plot. And I know we've been doing our scatter plots on Desmos, having Desmos come up with our line of best fit. Um, but they are giving us two points that are on the line, okay? So we're going to use those two points. We have this point at 0, uh, 5,000, and we have this point here at 10, 7,000. Now, the equation of the line is always y equal mx plus b. <clears throat> our b is our y-intercept, and our y-intercept is, let me just kind of focus that, our y-intercept is 5,000. So I'm going to come here, and in place of that B, I am going to put 5,000. Now to find my M, my slope, a couple things you could do. One way is that slope is equal to change of Y over change of X. So when I'm doing change of Y, I am going to basically subtract my Ys. Okay, so either I'm going to go 7,000 minus 5,000, or 5,000 minus 7,000. I think I'd rather take 7,000 minus 5,000 because that's going to give me a positive. So 7,000 minus 5,000. Okay, now on bottom, if I did 7,000 from this point minus 5,000 from this point, I got to keep that same order. So I'm going to do 10 minus 0. And so I'm going to get 2,000 over 10 scooch it over, and 2,000 over 10 is 200. And that's going to be my slope, okay? So this is going to be y equal 200x plus 5,000. Now, you could also have drawn in, okay, so I'm going to move this over for a sec so I can get this bigger, okay? You could also have drawn in a slope triangle, okay, like this. And then what you have to pay attention to is here I'm at a height of 5,000. 5, here I'm at a height of 7,000. So from 5,000 to 7,000, I went 2,000. From here, I'm at 0 to 10. So from 0 to 10, I went 10. And then remember, this is change of y, this is change of x, because this is my y direction and x direction. And so you see, I'm going to end up with that same slope, 2,000 over 10, which reduces to, to 200. Okay. Then um, we're going to do the um, sentence frames or interpret the slope and interpret the y-intercept. So I'm going to type those for us. Okay, so over here, 
Let me get my text box. And maybe I'll shrink that down a little. That's kind of big. Okay. And I'm going to fill it so we can see where I'm at. Okay. So interpret the slope. So this is our sentence frames. On average, as the, and this is where you're going to talk about the x axis, okay, or the x, what, what the x is um, representing. So as the number of days after last tune up increases by one, one day, uh, and this is now our y, uh, car mileage, and you have to look at the graph. So the first part, it always is increases by one because it's the slope, we want a unit rate is what we want by one, whatever your X is going by, okay? Um, the car miles, mileage, and now we have to look at our graph and see if it's increasing or decreasing. And looking at it, Sorry, looking at it, this is going up, right? So this is increasing, okay? So the car mileage um, is increasing by about, and my slope was 200. So it's increasing by about 200 miles. Interpret the um, y-intercept. Okay, so let me get the fill in again. Okay, so remember my y-intercept is 0, 5,000. So when the, again your x, which is number of days after the last tune-up um, is zero, the, and this is your y, car, mi car mileage is about, and now my y-intercept was 5,000 miles. And that's the video on the RFF class work number one.